All right. Hey, hey there. We're starting to get some people coming into the room. And I am also making sure that folks are getting the link because it seems like that seems to be an issue. How's everybody doing today? All good. Awesome. That's what I love to hear. Happy hump day, y'all. Right. Yes. That was everyone. All right. Got some folks coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think I just hit everybody that was there. There we go. What's up, y'all? All right. Welcome, welcome. All right. So we'll keep letting people in as they come in, um, but we're also going to get started because that's what we working on. That's what I'm working on. If y'all know me, I'm good for showing up late to a lot of places, except for my own stuff. <laughs> I do try to show up on time for my own things. All right. So there we go. All right, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to High Performance at High Noon. Uh, I am Joyce Johnson. I'm a work-life integration strategist. I'm still letting that roll off my tongue because I'm really excited to be in this space. And, um, you know, I've been doing economic development for a little while now, and I am excited to be here in this space as well because this is a passion of mine. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, and I started this call because as I have been a serial entrepreneur um, for a lot of years now, I keep getting asked, Jice, how do you do it all? And really, my answer is with a lot of grace and with work-life integration. This is why it is a passion of mine, because um, I am excited about the type of life that I have been able to build for myself and the life that I'm continuing to build for myself. And I think I have learned a lot in this space, and I'm excited to impart it to anyone who wants to know. So that's why y'all are here. So this call is every Wednesday. It is at noon Mountain Standard Time. It is at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. on my West Coast. So hopefully um, you can join me again and again and again because I'm here to continue to bring value. So come on in, come on in, come on in. There we go. All right. So every week, every Wednesday. So um, this is a Q&A, so I'm going to talk for a little bit. That's the structure of this. I'm going to talk for a little bit, and then I'm going to open up for questions um, because I want you to be able to ask questions. And I'm also going to talk about how you can work more closely with me. This is an opportunity for me to kind of give back in a space that I've been asked before. If you knew, if you have followed my journey for some years, I actually used to do a free call before, um, and uh, then I stopped, and now I'm back. So, but I want to be able to be in here and provide a lot of um a lot of value in this space. So um, make sure that you are thinking about this, write, writing down any questions. If you're driving, don't take notes. The call is recorded and you can get that playback now officially on my um, on my website and on our YouTube platform. Um, but if you are in a position to take notes, I recommend that you do because I got a lot of information for you today. Because today we are gonna talk about, are you protecting your peace or your comfort? And this was important. Uh, of a, this was an important conversation because as you think about creating the life that you really want to live, you can't. Your life can't look like it does today, unless you're living your best life. If you're living your best life, join the call with me and help me tell everyone how to live their best life. But if you feel like you have a next best life in you, a next space that you want to live, you're not satisfied with where you are. You have things that you want to accomplish, things that you want to do, then you have to be able to determine the difference between how you break out your comfort zone and what's considered protecting your peace. That is just super important um, because I hear a lot of things like, I'm not going to do that. I'm protecting my peace. Uh, I don't want to be around that person. I'm protecting my peace. If it's not about my peace, I'm not about it. And I started to ask people like, what does that mean to you when you're talking about protecting your peace? How is that showing up in your life? Like, what does peace actually mean for you, the individual? So uh, as I started listening to some answers, I was like, I feel like we're confusing peace with comfort. 
for some folks, not everyone, but I feel like there's a lot of spaces that we're confusing peace with comfort. So how do we make those determinations? So again, if you're in a position to take notes, you're going to want to write a lot of this down because I'm about to talk about what peace actually looks like. Peace and comfort. This is an issue of what's internal versus what's external. So peace is really about internally how you are operating, how you are showing up and what is taking, no matter what's taking place around you, how you internally are able to deal with that, right? So um, this is not this is not necessarily in the spiritual space, but you know, the peace in the midst of the storm kind of a situation, right? Um, and then you also have what's comfortable and what's comfortable is really what's taking place externally. You can define comfort as what is the room temperature look like? What am I wearing? Right. How is my hair done? Um, you know, for me, I like jeans and a T-shirt. Um, you know, that's comfort for me. So now when I have to put on a suit, that's uncomfortable for me. Uh, those are things that I think about is me going to a business meeting that requires me to be dressed in um, business attire, is that considered breaking my peace or is that breaking my comfort, right? So, you know, some folks, you know, say, oh, I just want to show up, uh, you know, authentically, which is cool, but sometimes you might be put in a position where you have to show up in a way that doesn't mean internally you can't be authentic, but externally you might have to put on something different. Is that your peace or is that your comfort? So I wanted to start making that distinction. So, um, Peace can be found in the midst of chaos because peace is what's happening internally. So I want to talk about that first before we get into comfort, because peace is around developing mental toughness, a mental toughness of a sort um, in order for you to uh, protect that internal space, protect that peace, protect that, that, that internal um, ability to ride out whatever's happening on the external. So here's a couple of spaces that you might want to check about whether or not you're in a space of peace. One is who is in your circle. So if you are continuously around toxic people and, um, Maybe I'll do something on toxicity because I think that's also a buzzword that gets thrown out there quite often, right? If you are in a space of uh, of toxic people, people who are always complaining about something, ain't nothing ever going right. Um, they always, it's always somebody else's fault. Sometimes it's your fault. People who like to be argumentative, maybe that's you and you just don't even know it. But as I'm saying it, you like, oh yeah, that sounds a lot like me. Like you might be the toxic person in another space. That's for you to take some time with and figure out for yourself. Um, but if you find that you are around toxic people, that can be a space where you're not able to find peace because that toxicity is constantly being poured in and around your energy, in your space, in your spirit. So again, internally, because if you want to go, you know, home or to the office or to work or hang out with friends and those friends are causing you to be in a space that um, is constantly uh, combative or argumentative or um, just kind of like always Debbie Downer kind of situation, Daryl Downer kind of situation, you know, is that a space of peace? So as you're reflecting on peace internally, think about who's in your circle, because when you find that people in your circle are not um, peaceful, if, they're, if they are toxic, one of the things you need to do in order to maintain peace internally is to remove them from your circle. And so I talked about that before, you got to love people from a distance, Sometimes it's ain't about who you love. It's not about who you care about. It's about where they sit inside of your um, life and inside of your immediate space or a consistent space, right? Sometimes you got to be around family, but you ain't always got to be around family. So how do you figure out, you know, how to remove toxic people out of your space? Another area that you want to look at in terms of internally protecting that piece is your self-talk. Do you spend a lot of time talking negatively to yourself? Do you spend a lot of time blaming yourself for things, right? And so what is that self-talk looking like? If you find that when you run into a situation, you are out here blaming yourself, you want to think about how to start adjusting your talk. A lot of that, the, that can be due to like, if you are affirming yourself or what you are affirming yourself in. Sometimes people confuse affirmations with just positivity, but you can have negative affirmations. You can be negatively affirming yourself in a situation or a thing. One of the uh, things that I think is really key about that, and this is actually a recommendation, is um, two books 
but read them in this order. So one is extreme ownership, right? Because one of the ways that you don't, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute when we get to victimhood, is if you cannot take ownership for yourself, you cannot take ownership for your actions, you can't take accountability for what's going on around you, that can also put you in a place where you don't experience peace. However, when it comes to that negative self-talk and that excessive blame, you want to think about how you do that in a way that is empowering not and, and constructive, not necessarily in a way where you're just tearing in at yourself. So there's a... Um, an author, his name is uh, Jocko Willinks. I think it's how Will Willinks, Willinks. I have to figure out how you pronounce that exactly. But um, he is the author. He was a co-author of the book called Extreme Ownership. Well, then he and his co-author went back and did a second book, which I absolutely recommend, highly recommend and highly love. It's called The Dichotomy of Leadership. And the part of the reason for them going back to do this book is because when they talked about extreme ownership, they basically said 100% everything falls on you, right? If it's happening in your life, you need to take ownership for it. And what they found in that space was that they were also promoting this kind of negative self-talk. So people were really getting down on themselves because when something wasn't going right, they were like, oh, it's all me. It's all my fault. It's everything that I've done. So then they came back with, there's a, really, there's a dichotomy. And so this, again, I'm going to talk about this in a minute around the victim space, but there is a dichotomy. And that dichotomy helps you to figure out, like, go in between the space of ownership, which you do need to have, accountability and ownership for your actions, but also the space in which you recognize um, that you have leverage to get empower other people in your space and hold them accountable too as for the things that they're supposed to be accountable for and how you talk talk to yourself in a way that's empowering so all of those things i recommend both of those books even though they did come back with a second book there's a lot of very um valuable information inside of extreme ownership and then going back and also reading um the dichotomy of leadership two amazing books so highly recommend those all right. Also in the space of protecting your peace or thinking about how you come to a place of peace is chasing things that are not necessarily tangible, like chasing some very weird version of happiness, not necessarily changing things that are intrinsic, right? Things that you can carry with you. And so if your happiness and your joy and your peace is built on material things, you will struggle when those material things are taken away from you. What you it's not that you can't make those things goals, but they should not be tied to your happiness. So you should be able to be content or find peace, whether you have a little or you have a lot. Because if you get a lot and that a lot is taken away from you, if you are not a person of peace, you are then going to struggle that you don't have a lot. You can go back for it. This is not about what, how you want to live your lifestyle. This is about internally how you can deal with having both a little and how you can deal with having a lot. Um, so now that that space of victimhood, oh, this is a big one because the bad shit happens to all of us, okay? It happens to those who you see doing amazing and it happens to those who you see doing shitty. And sometimes we look at those who, you know, people who are not doing well and saying, oh man, like, look at the, you know, look at what's happened to them, right? But more importantly, are they saying, look at what's happened to them? because life can go in these ebbs and flows. And so you might be experiencing a shitty time right now. It doesn't mean that that's going to be your life for forever and always. And when you get into that next space, right, how have you internalized when something bad has happened to you? And sometimes we can look at these things like, you know, something small, I don't have a lot of money, but sometimes there are deeper um, things that have happened to us or that have happened in our vicinity um, that are really, really life-changing. You could be dealing with loss. You could be dealing with rape. You could be dealing with molestation. You could be dealing with uh, theft. You could be dealing with um, disease or sickness. There's a lot of things that can happen to you. And the question is, do you internalize those things as you, or do you recognize those are things that have happened to you? So they are not who you are. They are things that have happened to you because no matter where you go, you're going to experience someone who has had something similar to them happen. There's no new thing happening under the sun. There are major atrocities that are happening worldwide. Some of them have happened to you as an individual. Some of them have happened to me as an individual. 
the question in terms of finding that peace is, do I attach that to who I am or do I acknowledge that that is a thing that has happened to me? So this comes back to that space of ownership. Something that I, that you know, am I taking ownership for something that is not, is, is out of my control? Or do I acknowledge the things that are inside of my control that I can change, right? And then the things that are happening to me or around me that I can't control are things that are um, happening to me, not who I am. And making that distinction is wildly important to how we see ourselves and how we see ourselves is wildly important to whether or not we have are experiencing peace, even in the midst of a, of a storm or chaos. Um, another thing that really strips us of our peace is trying to impress or having that external validation or like that materialism space. So again, finding things on the outside of you that you think are going to validate you on the inside. You cannot only find external validation. Um, at some point, as we continue to talk about things in this work-life integration space, I will talk about how um, that external validation has shown up in my life and how that has caused me at a lot of times to miss out on opportunities or to not experience the type of opportunities that I was really hoping for because I was seeking something on the outside of me instead of me um, confirming and affirming what was already on the inside of me. And so these are all things that we, you know, really struggle with, but really working on how to be impressive, how to show up in a space where you're impressing someone else, um, how to make sure that someone else is proud of you. You know, how do you start to release those expectations that you have allowed for other people to put on you uh, is, is a big piece of how you find peace on the inside. And I'll actually also refer you back to the very first week because the very first week we talked about releasing external expectations in order for you to determine what is your version of success. Because when we talk about that space of how do I live the life that I really want to live, how do I live the life of my dreams? That comes to you making a determination on what that life actually looks like. But if you're holding on to expectations that other people have placed on you, you may find that you're living a life that someone else has told you you should be living in order for you to find happiness or in order for you to find success. So that's oftentimes how we get into that space where we're not really living our best life because we're living somebody else's best life. We're living somebody else's version of a best life. What they told us is what we need. That could be everything from the degree you ain't got, the career field you're in, the type of husband or wife you're looking for, the way you think your kids are supposed to show up, the type of house that you feel like you should live, the type of neighborhood you feel like you should live in. A lot of those, those expectations that we've placed on ourselves have come from external sources. And so again, I'm encouraging you to go back and listen to that only because I really start talking about how some of those external expectations um, are necessary in our younger years, right? It's a, it's a formative thing. And then where we get to the place where we release those external expectations and begin to take on our own. So I'll refer you back to the very first week that we launched this call. Um, couple more places in this space of finding peace. Perfectionism versus excellence. We spend a lot of time trying to work on being perfect. And that perfectionism can really stop us from moving forward, but also it becomes an, an other is another issue of internal validation. If we feel like we want to reach this mark and this mark is what we consider perfect, but we've not hit that mark, that can really mess with you internally. And so then you find that you're not really able to move forward the way that you thought you were able to move forward or that you're not finding the peace inside because you're feeling like you're failing somewhere. And so really striving for excellence in that space is what can bring you peace because excellence is the next best level that you're able to accomplish and so versus the, the, you know, going straight for the top or for perfectionism. So I have two more in this space. One's important. This is grudges. Holding on to grudges. You know, I really used to struggle when people talked about how forgiveness is for yourself and it's not for them. And there's a space that that's really true, but it's mostly in the space of how and where you hold grudges. Because again, if we're talking about internal peace, that I can be peaceful no matter what's going on around me, how, how I hold on to when someone has done something to me or when I feel like I've been wronged by someone, how I hold on to that is a space that can cause me to be in peace or, or lose my peace. It really can. 
Those grudges, that space of grudges is so important. Uh, one, one of the things to remember um, is that people are the star of their own story. So you're holding on to a grudge because you're the star in your story, but they're the star in their story. So when you're letting go, it really is for you. And it doesn't mean that you have to forget, but it does mean how you hold on internally to how and how you deal with how somebody has done you. Holding on to that grudge is something that removes your peace. And the last one is being passive aggressive or not setting boundaries. That is super important in this space of whether or not you can find peace. Like you can continue to put yourself in a situation over and over again because you haven't established boundaries or you are not okay with having a tough conversation and saying something to somebody about your boundaries or about what you want to accept or don't want to accept inside of your life. So I got, I got boundary issues, y'all. I will tell you that now. To this day, I have boundary issues. It is a regular topic of conversation for me inside of my therapy sessions because I have boundary issues. First of all, I am way meaner in my mind than I am out loud. And so when people are bothering me, like I might not say nothing. I really struggle with setting boundaries. So as you think about like the space of your peace, you want to ask yourself where in here... Where in some of these areas do I struggle that I need to develop my own mental toughness to have the tough conversations, to let go of the grudges, to make sure that I'm chasing things of value and not just chasing materialism, to make sure that I'm striving for excellence and not striving for perfectionism. What's happening inside that can help me develop the mental toughness that I need in order to actually maintain peace? So when we are clear about what maintaining peace looks like, that's when we're able to start thinking about what is actually considered comfort, but more importantly, how to get out of your comfort zone, because that's where you start to find growth is outside of your comfort zone. So I mentioned when we started, peace is about what's happening internally to you. Comfort is about what's happening externally. Comfort is the external space. So when we are in our comfort zone, we tend to go to the default of things, even a negative default. When you are around too many positive folks, you might start defaulting back to some negative folks because that's where you're comfortable is around all that negativity. You might start defaulting back to the toxic people because you're comfortable around all the toxic people. That's where you might have been living your best life, but not really your best life. That's the life you're trying to leave, but that's the life you're comfortable in. Sometimes when you're trying to grow to your next level, you put yourself in a room of experts and you might have used to be the smartest person in your room and now you're the dumbest person in your room. So you're not comfortable being the dumbest person in the room. So then you default back to being the smartest person in the room. That doesn't help you grow. When I started the venture fund, um, we started this venture fund and I'm like, I don't know nothing about venture. So next thing I know, I'm sitting in this room full of people who are talking about all type of terms that I don't know, numbers that I don't know. They're spitting out information quick. Like you start mixing acronyms with math in a fast paced environment, your whole mind just start like, wait, what? What are we talking about right now? So I remember being in these spaces and being like, I have no idea what's going on. And it's almost a year later. And guess what? I am still struggling in these spaces, but I still keep showing up. I still keep showing up. In September, I went to um, my first conference in New York for venture capital. I was at a black venture capital conference. I sat there and didn't know what the fuck they was talking about. I was taking notes like, yep, I'm gonna look that term up. I'm gonna look that. It's almost a year later, but I have to keep showing up in those spaces no matter how uncomfortable they are. And it was another space of uncomfortability because I normally travel with someone or I'm going somewhere where I have a network. I know next to nobody in New York. Uh, New York is very loud. I'm very introverted. So I went by myself to a very loud, fast paced place in an environment in a, with topics that are mind blowing to me, mind boggling at this point still to me. So I spent like three days co in complete discomfort. Like, well, I'm here though. Showing up is half the battle. So being able to put yourself in them space that you feel me, Roxy, like it is half the battle, right? <laughs> like, it's hard out in these streets. So, um, when you're thinking about your comfort, here are some things you want to be thinking about. You want to be thinking about your routines and your habits. 
that is a space of comfort, not a space of peace. When you're thinking about comfort, this is in, in both. You want to be thinking about your circle. So one is if you're in circles that are actually not bringing you peace, like they are causing you mental, emotional stress, um, sometimes physical stress, like all those things, those are spaces of peace. But when you're thinking of spaces of comfort in your circle, you're actually asking yourself, are you in circles that are here to help you grow? Are you in circles that are going to help push you? Are you in circles that are going to help develop you? Are you in circles where you're going to be able to learn? Then you want to ask yourself about exposure. What are you being exposed to when you're in that space of comfort? Right. And so like, are you going to things that are new? Are you are you getting new exposure? And I'll say experiences. Are you getting new experiences? Then you want to ask yourself, what kind of environments are you putting yourself in? So you have the people you're putting yourself around, but you also have the environments that you're putting yourself in. The thing I just left right before jumping on this call is a group called EO. It's called Entrepreneurs Organization. I actually had them sponsor at the Black Boss Summit. Um, I would love to talk more about them at another time, maybe if they sponsor this call. Um, but EO is, a, is an organization for entrepreneurs. So you have to be making a million dollars or more to be in EO. So for clarity, I'm in EOA. That is the accelerator on my way to a million dollars uh, because BBI is not a million dollar business. And so um, so for the EOA program, though, you have to be in a space where you're making at least $250,000 or more up to just under a million. But the people who were around are all millionaires. So, so I'm in an environment that I have to keep exposing myself to of millionaires. Well, guess what? The space is also very largely white because I could rattle off black statistics on millionaires all day long. Don't matter what people are saying online. We are talking about where people actually are. And black millionaires are not, they're not a ton of them. Black multimillionaires, they're certainly not a ton of them. So now being in a position or a space where you're actually running into or being around people who are making larger amounts of money, who have scalable businesses, who are, you know, uh, operating with 10, 12, some 50. I think one person that was uh, recently, I was recently talking to has 220 employees. I got two. That's a different environment. It's stretching me, right? So beginning to think about the routines, the habits, the circles, the exposure, the experience, and the environments that you are in are spaces that are creating uncomfortable places for you initially, right? But those are not the same thing as what's happening internally that is uh, breaking your peace. So you could feel uncomfortable, but uncomfortability is not the same thing as breaking your peace. So peace, internal measure, comfort is an external measure that is tied to your ability to grow and develop. All right, so I got two things. I have some homework for you. I got some homework for you. So, but before I open it up to some Q&A, I want to talk a little bit about my program that I'm getting ready to start um, that I'm going to be launching in December. So I want you to make sure that you go to jicejohnson.com, get on my calendar. If you are interested in learning more about my program, excuse me while I live intentionally. And this is really all about intentional living. This is acknowledging where you are and where it is that you want to be and how we start to strategically align that so that you're not waiting for years down the line. Like, oh, in five years, I want to live this way. When I retire, I want to live this way. I don't even know if retirement is a real thing anymore, right? Like who you know that don't work some kind of way. So when we think about that, right, oftentimes we think about a life that we really want to live and that life looks like it's way down the line. But you can actually intentionally start living that life today and you can make strategic steps to build that type of lifestyle for you. And the things that we're talking about inside this call are some of those high level things, but I really want to help you dig down and get to your best life. So if that interests you, you can head over to jaisjohnson.com. Um, you can get on my calendar because we are going to launch that program. It will be done live once. So in this first time, you want to get in here where we can talk live. Um, and I want to make sure that I answer any of your questions regarding that program. So. 
I'm gonna tell you about your homework and then I'm gonna open up for a Q&A. So here's your homework. And if you haven't been on my call before, welcome, welcome, welcome. I do give homework at the end of every call because I want this to be impactful. So I don't wanna just be talking at you for 20, 30 minutes. I wanna make sure that when I talk, at you, <laughs> that I give you something that you can actually do to start implementing these concepts inside of your life. So I have two parts to your homework. One is assessing your peace. So everyone has levels to this. This is never a space where it's always just, I've gotten to a place of peace and I'm forever at peace forevermore going forward, right? These are places where you evolve because as your life evolves, as you grow, where you find peace today, when you move up to your next level in your life, that may alter how you're able to find peace. You're growing, you're shifting. As you grow, as you shift, so is your level of peace. So is what's comfortable or not comfortable to you. So these are levels of growing. So you first want to assess your peace. That means you want to assess who you're around. That's toxic people. You want to check your environment for who you're around. You want to ask yourself, how are you doing in your own self-talk? How do you speak to yourself internally? You want to assess your goals. Are these goals around how you want to live or are these goals purely materialistic and without them, you feel like you have not achieved or you have failed in life? Like some of this is going to be pillow talk, right? Because this is you assessing what's happening internally. Really check your goals. Are your goals really materialistic? It's this kind of car, this kind of house, this kind of, these kind of clothes, these kind of shoes, these kind of bags. If that's all your goals, that's purely materialistic. And you're really going to struggle with finding internal peace because that's always going to change. Um, you also want to ask yourself about victimhood. Do you see yourself as a victim or do you see yourself as someone that has experienced something negative that has happened to them? Ask yourself that because that, that's a space that is really going to show up for you as you continue to think about your peace. If you identify as a victim in some way, shape, or form, that's going to continue to affect your peace. You want to ask yourself, are you striving for perfection or excellence? And really be okay with this. Like I could tell y'all, I am a perfectionist. I am a recovering perfectionist. This is not the space where you're going to come and I'm about to tell you how perfect my life is and how you can get your life perfect like mine. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of aspects of my life that looked up, okay? I am a recovering perfectionist. I regularly have to remind myself that I am striving for excellence. I am not striving for perfection. Regularly. That is a thing. That is a regular conversation with myself. Jace, that is a perfectionism, perfectionism issue. You are now about to move forward in your best self. <laughs> That's what I'd be having to tell myself. Then you have to ask yourself about grudges. Are you holding grudges? Where are you holding grudges? This could be in so many places. This could be with your parents, with your spouse, with your siblings, with your coworker, with your homegirl or homie that you then grew up with. This could be with um, your current significant. I mean, there's a whole lot of places for you to hold grudges. So really ask yourself that. Like when you run into somebody, how are you feeling about that person? Is it a space that you were still holding a grudge? You ain't got to mess with them. You could forever not fuck with them. But the question is, is it a grudge that you're holding that is causing you issues internally? And then your boundaries. Boundaries. How are you showing up in your boundaries? So assess those things. Spend some time really making assessments on where you are in that space. Because again, this is just a place for you to grow. And as you grow, you might find that you'll have to reassess them. Again, you might be not holding grudges today. Some, something might go down tomorrow. Then next thing you know, you might be holding grudges. And now you got to assess that for yourself. <laughs> I wasn't holding no grudges last week, but today, okay. So consider that, right? So always be thinking about these things when it comes to how you are maintaining your peace. Then I want you to think about the second part of your homework is pushing your comfort pushing your comfort. So this is you getting out your comfort zone. You have always have to be getting out your comfort zone because your comfort is tied to your next level of growth, your ability to continue to grow and develop. So for 90 days, I want you to think of one thing, whether it's in your routines or habits, whether it's in the people that you're putting yourself around, whether it's in what you're exposing yourself to, um, the experiences that you're exposing yourself to, the environments that you're exposing yourself to, think of one area that you can really be intentional about pushing yourself out of that area. 
whether that's leaving people behind or finding a new circle that you need to be in. Maybe you're growing in your business, you're growing in your career. There's a new space that you need to be in. Maybe it's a habit that you know you need to develop in order for you to get to your next level. And it's going to be really hard for you to develop that habit. Maybe it's an environment that you need to be around. So look at one area that you can be committed to for the next 90 days, being intentional to break out of your comfort zone in that one area. Don't hesitate to share it with me and just tag me in it so I know what's up. I will keep track. All right, so I'm gonna open up for some Q&A. That's your homework. Assess your peace, push your comfort. That's your homework. And uh, then I'm gonna open up for questions. Are there questions about anything that we have? Questions, comments, experiences you wanna share? Feel free to take yourself off mute or if you raise your hand, I'll, I think I'll see that as well. Hey, Jice, this is David. Can you hear me? I can. Good. Hey, uh, you know, thanks. First of all, I want to say thank you for putting this on. Thank you for uh, shooting out the email. I had a chance to see it so I can jump on, you know, and it's been a while since I've I've engaged. So I figured, oh, man, I got the time today. So I uh, appreciate the nuggets you uh, were dropping. And uh, I want to I want to go back real quick. You know, um, I'm, I'm always trying to maintain a healthy dose of, of self-awareness. Right. And you know what you was talking about checking your circle to make sure you don't have toxic people around you, but also making sure you're not the toxic one. So, so I'm always kind of self-aware about that. And, and, and I'll kind of give a little bit more context. I would say probably in the past two years now, and I feel like I'm meeting people now that I'm just not rubbing them the right way. And it's not a lot. But it's just like a handful of people I'm meeting. Typically, I get along or, or I can engage and interact pretty well with most folks, right? But there have been like a handful of people. I can count on one hand where we just ain't jiving. So, so does that mean that that ain't my tribe and I need to get on, get the hell away from them folks or, 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 you know, or, or love them from afar, as you say? So I think it depends on what kind of role those folks play in your life, right? Um, because as you continue to grow, you very well may not like rub elbows with the same type of people. Sometimes people are uncomfortable around your growth, right? So you ain't got no problem with them. They got a problem with you. And I think if you notice that, like if you're noticing that type of friction inside of a space that you're trying to be in, then I would definitely make an assessment about why is this space valuable for me? So why are those people valuable for me? And if they are people that still need to be in your life, like family or, you know, sometimes even longtime friends or whatever that, that case might be, if you feel like we still hang around some of the same circles or whatnot, you know, then assess where you need to sit in that space or where that space needs to sit in your life. You know, family is not going to change, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to engage with family in the way that you always have. And so I think I had put out a post. I have to go back and look to see if I can find it like verbatim, but it rang really true because sometimes you get into the space where you think people are here for forever and they're not. So if you're coming across folks that for whatever reason, because I can't like, when you say that, I'm not sure if these are people that you've always known and now you're not rubbing them the right way or just in, or they've recently come into your circle and you're not rubbing them the right way. But they're like, recently, you, they're recently, they're recent, recent. So they recently come into your circle and then, you know, then, yeah, you probably, I, I would, would switch up circles. I mean, you know, like sometimes it just don't work. Right. So you can always be cordial, but there's no need for you to continuously put yourself in a situation that is hostile. But I guess the other side of that is if for some reason you think it's something on your side, then that's another opportunity to really sit down and assess. Like, is there something that you're doing? Is there a way that you're showing up? And that might be a reason why they're not, right? So you don't want to get like caught up in that external validation. Like you run across folks, usually everything's pretty cool. Now it's not. I feel like that for myself. Like, gener you know, one of the most interesting things to me when I was coming up, um, when I was really like building BBI would be people who would be like, uh, oh, I was afraid to come and talk to you because I thought you were, uh, you know, some people thought I was mean. 
Some people thought I was stuck up. Some people thought I wouldn't talk to them. I was like, that really confused me as to like why you would see me in that light, right? Um, and so for a while, I had started to internalize that. Like I started smiling at people I didn't even know they care about. Hey, you know, like just so that you would know I was friendly. And then that also was a drain for me because I'm an introvert. When I like trying to come out and be extroverted so you don't think I'm mean, was draining for me but I had to walk through that experience for me to recognize that in that space I was actually searching for external validation because that feedback had kind of thrown me off so then I had to go back and switch into who I am like if you come and talk to me I'm good we could talk all day I'm not mean however I'm no longer in a space where when I walk in I feel like I need to try and be extroverted to get you to feel comfortable with me mm. I have internal peace about who I am <laughs> So hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> oh, no, that's very helpful. That actually plays into a lot, man. You know, so I, and I don't want to dominate the, you know, uh, Jerry. Uh, I would, you know, Jerry, Jerry uh, uh, dropped the question in the chat. These people, I would say 50-50, half and half. Some are business related. Some are, are you know, close family, you know, so. And, and, well, and, and I won't say the one of the close family in terms of the newer relationships, you know, it's just uh, mostly business and social relationships. Let me put it like that. Yeah, so. definitely make that assessment for yourself. And don't, I don't think there's necessarily a right or a wrong answer. I think it's going to be about, again, you finding that internal peace for yourself, but also, you know, being real, right? And, and holding yourself accountable if you're exhibiting toxic traits or behaviors. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Who's next? Hi, Jace. This is Marjani. Um, Hi. I, my question was similar to David's as, um, you know, I'm not from the community. And so I'm trying to build those relationships. Um, more so for me, I'm growing my business at the same time. And I attend these events, I attend these trainings, and I meet different people. And they say, yeah, let's, let's follow up and let's do this and let's do that. But then you may reach out five, six times, or you may see them at another event and they have no clue who you are. And so you're trying to figure out where you fit. And I mean, it does make you question, you know, if you're on the right track of, of trying to build your business in Denver and especially wanting to build your business with um, black professionals. What is your take on that or advice in that situation? Um, one is not to take it personally. So I might do a whole thing on the four agreements, but one is not to take it personally, right? So again, like coming back to make an assessment about things that you could be doing um, or not doing, but sometimes, especially in that networking space, um, like I find that networking oftentimes is just not, is not personal. Uh, people are there. They really, you know, a lot of times people are in there for their own um, for their own goals and purposes. And what, if they feel like, you know, that you are a fit for something that they're trying to do, they would probably follow up. So they may not feel like they're a fit or there might be something like in terms of that networking space where you want to be intentional about going back and kind of assessing your um, elevator pitch or, you know, things like that. Like what is your uh, six second something or other? You know what? There is... Um, there's a guy named YB and YB was at the 2021 Black Boss Summit. And he talked about like how you create this kind of six second, you know, it's like less than the 30 second elevator pitch. This is who I am. This is what I do. And like getting that to roll off your tongue. When you roll that off your tongue, if it doesn't resonate with somebody that they might not be for you. Right. So it's being, it's making sure that who you're looking for, who you think you're looking for is who's actually looking for you. So that might be some of your business model, kind of going back, asking yourself, who's your target market? You you know, what it is that you're trying to do. And then also, is your business a locale-based business? Does it have to be built with people that are here? Or is this just the space that you want to build because you're here? So keep showing up, keep, you know, doing what it is that you're doing, but also make sure that your marketing and your sales inside of your business is set up to address who it's actually set up to address, not necessarily just the folks here. Because some of that might not mean, if you're new to a space, you're just going to take time to find your tribe. It took me two years to find just a basic tribe in Denver. And now most of that tribe is not a part of my tribe today. I think I have strongly one person in that initial tribe that is still a part of my tribe today. And then I have like, I mean, I'm cool with with, with pretty much everybody. We, there's no love lost, but like, we're not, that's not my tribe. 
So how do you, you know, start to develop who your tribe is, is largely going to be based on what you bring to the table, what they bring to the table and recognizing that those tribes may shift and grow as you shift and grow. Does that, does that help at all? And it does. Um, and I think that, you know, while this is all business focused for me, sometimes in these networking events, I'm not always like looking to connect with people just on the business side, but in a sense, just trying to get to know people, gather mentors, learn from others. Um, a lot of the time I'm trying to learn from others and I don't, I'm not sure if it's maybe I'm not coming across in that way or in that manner, but it's, it's a bit difficult and off-putting at times because I'm just not sure what the issue is or how to, to move past that. Mm. So, and I'm not from Denver either. So I, I don't know if that plays a part, but for me, it's been, it's been hard trying to penetrate that bubble. Yeah. <laughs> Denver folks are different. Um, I, I agree with that. So also not a native of Denver. Um, I would say that, you know, some of that is one of the things that I've learned here is that, and, and this has been my experience here in Denver per se, because like prior to this, I worked, well, let me say prior to Denver, I spent five years in Atlanta and I barely know anybody in Atlanta. My, actually my Atlanta network today is stronger than it was when I lived in Atlanta. Um, and I lived in Atlanta for five full years and walked away knowing next to nobody. Um, and it wasn't for necessarily a lack of trying, but it was just a space that I was in. It was very transitional. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was going through a lot personally. And for whatever reason, there were just a lot of connections that were very surface level. They weren't deep. I didn't develop like strong relationships with people. Um, one of the things that I had to work on for myself uh, was how is it that I am connecting? How deep do I want to go, right? Um, am I oversharing? Am I sharing too little? You know, am I showing up really quiet and reserved? Am I showing up, um, you know, really loud and 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 boisterous and in a space that people don't necessarily know me and they don't know how to take me, right? So some of that is going to be like you taking some time to think introspectively about how you show up or how you present. And also, who it is that you feel like are the type of people that you want to be around and do those things align. So me, I'm introverted. I actually love hanging out with extroverted people. Um, however, to hang out with extroverted people, you got to kind of dig in a little bit because they don't naturally attract the people who are like me. They like, she quiet. She's sitting over there in the corner. So I have to build one-on-one -on -one relationships. Like I don't walk into a room and just, Hey, everyone, I spend time. Like I hone in on a person. I like this person. This person's energy feels good to me. Let me connect with that person. Let me see about if we can go out and get a drink. Let me see if we can go out and do, you know, something or whatever. So I spend a lot of time, like kind of assessing for myself where I see this person sitting in and my network, if that makes sense. So I would spend a little bit more time probably being introspective, but not internalizing. Like the one thing you want to be careful of that space is that you are not internalizing how you are, how people are, are interacting with you as necessarily a thing that is attached to who you are. It could be how you're showing up. It could be how you're presenting. And some of those things you can shift without changing your authentic self. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, my dog is barking. This is the <laughs> second too. time somebody is at my door. I'm clearly not about to stop and answer because I don't know who just keep coming to my house, y'all, without an invitation. If y'all weren't here last week, last week, somebody knocked on my door right as we were closing. And I was like, I have no idea who's knocking on my door or why they would be knocking on my door without an invitation. So yes, sorry that my dog is barking. If y'all can hear that. Any other questions? I don't see anybody immediately. No more questions. Y'all feel good about peace, about comfort. Y'all know the difference. Y'all know how to assess that for yourself. Okay. Well, then I must have just been, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I was thorough. That's how I'm going to put it. I was thorough. Awesome. 
<laughs> okay, great. If there are no other questions, I'm going to release you back. Um, please do share out the call. Again, if you are looking to get in touch with me, make sure that you go to joycejohnson.com. You can get on my calendar. You can learn more about my program. Um, that's okay, girlfriend. You was late. Don't even worry about it. I got this was recorded, so I got the replay. Um, yes, make sure that you go back, though. Thank you for understanding the assignment. Make sure that you go back and spend some time again assessing what is um, what is is peace and what is comfort. Make sure that you really pull those things apart because um, it really does sometimes hurt my heart when I'm listening to people talk about what they ain't gonna do because they ain't gonna disturb their peace. And all they're really talking about is disturbing their comfort. And so you gotta be able to disturb your comfort in order for you to be able to grow. And that's what I really wanna see for y'all. So make sure that you um, check me out. If you have questions, you know how to reach me, head over to joshjohnson.com. I'm very excited about the program that's rolling out only because I know what it is that I'm getting ready to put out there has been so impactful for me in my life. So until next Wednesday at noon, 11 a.m. Pacific time and 2 p.m. Eastern time, I will see y'all later.